this is Kim Constable and welcome to this week's episode of Strong and Sculpted. So this week we are going to talk about the C word, but it's not the C word that you think. We're going to talk about consistency and moreover how to build it into your life in terms of going to the gym. One of the questions I get asked on a daily basis is, Kim, how do you remain so consistent? How do you get up do the work and show up every single day to go to the gym and do what needs done to build the body that you have. So I have a guest with me today, Mr. Mark Getty, who as you can see has been very consistent in the gym very over consistent. many years. And I know it's something, Mark, that you have built into your life and something that you train your athletes in yes. is really just showing up and doing the work. So I was hoping today you could share some of your top tips with my listeners, yeah. watchers, as to how does somebody, whenever they start on a gym program because you know what it's like you start in a gym program and you're really excited and you're really motivated and you go to the gym yeah. and then the doms kick in and the motivation wanes how do you build that consistency into your life and into your gym program so that you ultimately can see the results that you crave yeah i think personally for me and we'll just give a bit of background um now i am a business owner four kids and married so like I still, myself I still, like yourself <laughs> I still compete at professional level right. and I still then have to find time obviously to eat, train, uh, sleep and obviously do my cardio. So how I do it is simple, I uh, first of all goal set, I'm a big believer in setting myself goals, long term mm -hmm. and short term goals. You know I believe if the goal is too long and you haven't got anything to keep you interested in the short term you're going to go off the rails. So for me at the minute my long term goal is the Mr Universe in October. Mm -hmm. uh, short term, October next October year, October, next October year. a year away. October a year away, so it's, okay. it's 14 months, you know. Uh, short term goals for that, it's simple at the minute, it's uh, to basically get my body primed for what's going to happen. So for example, uh, between now and Christmas I've set myself a goal of losing 20 pounds, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean, and actually gaining the same back and muscle, if that makes any sense. 20 pounds of body fat. But 20 pounds of body fat and trying to put on more muscle in certain areas. Because so to lose 20 pounds, you could probably just chop off your arm. Yeah, yeah, no something. problem. Chop off a calf, <laughs> maybe, you know. A calf so or a foot. That's the short term goals. And then as the show gets closer, these goals uh, get bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, basically meeting what I need done come October. So that's the way I do it. I'm a big believer in goal setting, I'm a big believer in plan setting, I'm a big believer in the man to feel to prepare, mm -hmm. you know, prepare to feel. So, like, that's the yeah. way I look at it. Everything has to be set out my meals, my uh, supplements my training, my cardio. Now, getting back to the reason I emphasised that four kids, a lot of people's excuses for me is I don't have the time, I have these commitments, I have them commitments. I run a business where I'm in the gym roughly 14 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, I have four kids. Uh, I have a wife. wife, a demanding <laughs> wife, by the way. No. Um, no, no. <laughs> but that. the way I look at it is these things all have to be implemented. Now, I love spending time with my kids and my mm -hmm. wife. I love doing other things outside. So that's where I say that you have to work your training and work this into mm -hmm. your lifestyle, not the other way about. I believe the biggest mistake I pe see people making is they work their lifestyle around their training. Right. And their training comes first, especially in younger people where this is the only thing they think about. And on down the line, that leads to problems. Me, personally, I, the way I look at it is I want to do 60 minutes of cardio a day. If that means that I have to get up an hour early in the morning, then that's what I do. Uh, I know that if I don't do my cardio in the morning, I'm going to be chasing my tail the whole way during right. the day and feeling bad. If I do this for two or three days, I'll realise why I haven't done it and I'll get back to my routine. So it's about simple goal settings and making sure that the training falls into your lifestyle and nothing's being left out. Okay. So in terms of goals, Mark, you know, what is a, a good realistic, you're saying, you know, break it down into smaller yeah. goals, bigger goals, like is a month goal good, a two month goal, a three month goal, well, and then should it be measurable goal? Should yeah, it be I want to lose X amount of pounds? Well, I that wanna, is a goal. If you, you know, think about X it, amount of inches, yeah, what? a weekly goal, for example, if you want to lose, say, a stone, Mm -hmm. uh, which is 14 pounds over six weeks or whatever. Say it works out at two is that, pounds Is a that week. doable? You it think? is, Because a lot of people wouldn't even know what to say. Like, well, I want to lose three stone in four I, weeks. I would say what I try to get people to do is lose two pounds a week. That's okay. that's an average goal. And that, to me, is an achievable goal that everybody can do. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So if I was getting somebody ready for a show or a photo shoot or just general weight loss, I would be aiming two pounds a week. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So for a month, the aim would be to lose half a stone, 78 pounds. So that's a, that's a short-term goal. You know, the short-term goal that I would set most people weekly would be two pound, monthly mm -hmm. seventy-eight pound, and then obviously maybe we could take pictures every month and make sure that the the, the pictures are looking different than what they were a month later. You know, if that's going for, towards a photo shoot that we've left, say sixteen weeks, if you're doing two pound a week, it works out at nearly two stone mm. in that you know in that twelve. And weeks. what about also? Um 
you know, it, would it be a good goal to set for somebody to say, like, I want to, you know, train X amount of times per week. I want to, you know, I want to train three times or four yeah, times, well, or I want to do two cardio and four gym. Or per, yeah, know, big time. Like at the end of the day, should they do that kind of schedule? Yeah, the well? sh schedule's a good thing. Like that's what we talked about, I think, in a different video about planning, getting a plan, and making sure mm -hmm. that your plan's there so that you can, you know, achieve it. Like your plan has to set your goals. So if you want to lose, say, a stone in a month, mm -hmm. and you're training once a week. That's yeah, not, not going to cut happen, it. Right. So the plan has to be in relation to your goal. So for me, if I was having somebody wanting to do two pounds a week, I would be having them train four days a week with weights mm -hmm. and potentially doing five days a week cardio. Right. Do you know what I mean? And then obviously I'd be setting this plan and changing this plan depending on how the goal changes. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So if the following week I want to up it and go, right, we're going to go three, I might add more cardio in. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the plan has to be in relation to the goal. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, if you feel that you're going to lose a stone in a month, by doing one cardio session a week of 20 yeah. minutes, walking and eating ice cream, then you're not being realistic. <laughs> walking to the ice cream shop. Walking to the ice cream shop. Scheduled cardio. Yeah, it's your little, then you're a little bit I mean? delusional. So that's the thing, you know, at the end of the day, for me to be consistent, it's about setting a plan. I get excited when I set a new plan. Yeah, I know too. that sounds ridiculous, but I get excited to set a new plan. If I've got a plan that I want to start on a Monday, I'm excited on Sunday to do it. I'm excited to get up and do my cardio. I'm excited to do my training because I want to see this goal materialise yes. so I want I'm excited to see what this 12 week or 12 months transformation is going to look like so for me it's it's making that goal so big that you're excited that you want to do it do you know and what I mean what do you do whenever you know they always say motivation gets you going discipline keeps you going like what do you do whenever your motivation wanes like you wake up in the morning and the last thing like give me some real strategies here you're lying in bed the alarm has gone off it's 5 30 a.m you know you have to train before you go to work or you, it's not going to happen for the rest of the day and the last thing you want to do is get out of bed well i work what do you do i work it forward to how i'm going to be feeling later on like right. i know come eight o'clock at night i'm going to be feeling i have to do that cardio and i know i'm not going to do it right so i am going to feel like crap that whole day I'm going to be constantly thinking about that cardio I missed thinking about that cardio I missed so the way I look at it is I project myself forward six hours mm -hmm. to know how I'm going to be feeling if I don't do it do yes. you know what I mean I know I still have to do it or that goal's gone do you know what I mean and if you slip once it's okay but if you keep slipping then you're going to just fall down that slippery slope so to me it's easy I know if I miss leg training on a Saturday morning at half nine I'm going to be constantly wanting to train legs the whole day or my wife's going to go just get out of the house yeah. just get out of the house <laughs> Because you're being miserable, you're done moping around because you've missed the session, and then it runs into Sunday. You yeah. know, so the, my tip is, you know how you're going to feel by missing it, so don't miss it. And also, as I think it's really important to say about how one thing I have learned is, um, I feel so much better about myself, and I think this is true for everybody. You know, they can try this on. You feel so much better about yourself when you show up and you do what you, you do. said you were going to do. If you think about it, exercise releases endorphins and right. serotonin in the brain, which is considered the happy hormone. So that's why people leave the gym feeling good. They feel a sense of accomplishment. They feel a sense of achievement. Everything gym related is health related and everything like that, mental health even, do you know what I mean? It's right. all good for it. So why would you not want to do something exactly. like that that's going to influence your body and your life for the better? It's, it's kind a of no like um, the quote out of uh, Legally Blonde. Uh, I think it was Legally legally Blonde 1 or Legally Blonde. I think it was Legally Blonde 2. Did you ever see the movie? No. Elle Woods. <laughs> <laughs> and she said uh, one of, there was a girl in it who was actually accused of murdering her husband and, and legally blonde Elle Woods said um, she said but she said she couldn't have murdered her husband she said because she exercises and exercise releases endorphins and endorphins make you happy and happy people just don't kill their husbands <laughs> I thought it was such a good quote and the world is better for exercise and the world Do you know is better what I mean? for that. so That's set a true. goal project yourself forward into how you're going to feel when you don't show up for yeah. yourself and then just pull up your big girl pants your big and get girl on with pants or your big, big boy pants, pants and just get, on with just get on with it. Let's just face get facts, yourself out of bed. There's going to be days you're not going to want to do it, but no. them's the days it's going to feel far better to do it. Well, like I was you saying know. earlier, there's days I'm sure when people wake up and they don't want to go to work. And that's what that's the example I give to people. Yeah. I say, well, have you ever woken up at 7 a.m. and your alarm's gone off and you, you just do not want to get out of bed and go to work? And they say all the time. And I say, well, do you get out of bed? Yes. What makes you get out of bed? Uh, well, I don't know, I just do it, like the fear of getting fired or the fear of whatever, you know. So it's about just finding that motivation, just um, getting up yeah. and doing it and projecting yourself forward. Everybody's motivations up. are different. Right. But at the end of the day, once you find it, just use that and keep it. Yeah, that's true. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mark. No this problem. has been amazing. My but now I want to hear from you guys. Do you struggle with motivation? Do you struggle to get out of bed every morning and do the thing that you know you want to do? Or maybe you suffer from too much motivation, a little bit like myself, and you bounce out of bed and into your exercise regime every morning. Or what are your top tips for staying motivated? Is it about finding something you absolutely love to do, something that ignites a fire in your soul? Maybe Zumba is your thing. Maybe you don't like to train in the gym, but you love to do marathons. Whatever it is that keeps you motivated, I want to hear about it in the comments below.
So leave a comment below this video. Tell me what fires you up, what lights a fire in your soul, and I would love to have a conversation with you there. This is Kim Constable, and I will see you next week.